Hi guys, this is tablenews.com and I'm here with a tablet called the Xiaomi Mi Pad 2. It's a 7.9 inch rival for the iPad mini 4, but it's also much more than that. The tablet was launched in November 2015 and it's seen as one of the best tablets from last year. We got it from gearbest.com where we can find it priced at $186 in the 16GB version or $258 in the 64GB version. We have the 16GB one and uh, this device here comes after the Mi Pad 1 that we already tested last year and we liked it quite a bit. Now it's time to discuss the design. This model measures 7 millimeters in thickness of course some sources say 6.95 millimeters others say 7 millimeters somewhere between 6.95 and 7 millimeters it weighs 322 grams and these measurements make it thicker and at the same time heavier than the ipad mini 4 that measures 6.1 millimeters in thickness and weighs 299 grams by the way it's still more compact than the predecessor because the mi pad 1 measured 8.5 millimeters in thickness and weighed 360 grams so almost 40 grams lost which is quite impressive i have to say that it's also two or three millimeters less longer and less wider than the predecessor so even more compact it has an aluminum unibody shell as you can see it's a matte shell it has an excellent grip and it feels very light in the user's hand. It's prone for using with one hand for long hours without a problem. You can get it in gold or silver and you can see here we got rounded corners and also slightly rounded edges. It's very iPad mini like, we're not afraid to say it, it's pretty obvious but it also stands on its own through this color choice and the placements of the speakers for example. So let's analyze the sides. We got a front camera here, a bunch of sensors and notification light over here. The bezels are kind of big for current standards and requirements, but we're happy with that. And we got three capacitive buttons below the screen. Going to the back, we find the main camera here without a flash and with two microphones, one here and one here, and then the two speakers at the lower area of the back. At the top, only the audio jack, while at the bottom, there is the USB Type-C port and two screws keeping it all together. Nothing on the left side, while the right side features volume buttons and the on-off button with excellent feedback when pressed. This is a very comfy slate, also premium, and looking pretty hot as a Nokia N1 and iPad Mini 4 arrival. It has evolved from the plastic predecessor, the Xiaomi Mi Pad 1, was made of plastic, this one is made of metal, so that's an upgrade. And I find an aspect here slightly bothering, the USB Type-C port may tend to feel uncomfortable to your fingers when the tablet is handled in landscape, almost cutting a bit into your cuticles and things like that. But overall a premium design and a comfy slate. Now it's time to talk about the hardware. As far as hardware is concerned, this model offers a 7.9 inch screen, which is an IPS LCD with a resolution of 2048 over 1536 pixels. The processor inside is an Intel Atom X5 Z8500, it's a quad core chipset at 2.24 GHz and it relies on the 14 nanometer process. Also inside we find the Intel HD graphics solution, then we have 2GB of RAM and 16GB of storage, there is no micro SD card slot here and meanwhile the Mi Pad 1 had such a feature. We have two cameras here, at the front 5 megapixel shooter, at the back 8 megapixel shooter. When it comes to connectivity we are covered with Wi-Fi 802.11, A, B, G, N and AC, dual band, there is also Wi-Fi direct, Bluetooth 4.1 and USB Type-C 1.0 reversible right here. We also have sensors, obviously, accelerometer, gyroscope and compass, and finally, dual speakers. The things that are lacking the most among the hardware, well, there's no 3G version, there's no GPS, there's no NFC, there's no microSD, and there's no 32GB version, would have been better as a starting version here. And could have had a bit more RAM considering current trends. Now the battery is a 6190mAh lithium polymer unit, the capacity has decreased from the predecessor from what we know and let's see how it handled our tests. On paper we are promised 100 hours of music, 12 hours of video, 648 hours of standby, 
and fast charging through 5V and 2A charger. Now, in our test, that involves HD video playback in a loop with Wi-Fi on and brightness at 200 lux. We achieved 6 hours and uh, 5 minutes of playback which is a bit underwhelming especially when compared to other tablets out there. We surpassed the ASUS ZenPad 7.0 with its 4 hours and 32 minutes. We surpassed the Chewy V8 with its 5 hours and 58 minutes and the Cube i7 Remix with its 3 hours and 57 minutes. Still, we got beaten by the Nokia N1 with 8 hours and 32 minutes, the Xiaomi Mi Pad 1, 10 hours, and the Samsung Galaxy Tab S 8.9 with its amazing 13 hours and 33 minutes, more than doubling this time we achieved here. We also did a PC Mark test, which showed us a pretty good result. It's a simulation of continuous usage, 7 hours and 43 minutes, which is quite good. We surpassed the Nokia N1 with its 7 hours, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S2 9.7 with its 7 hours and 15 minutes, and the Asus Zenpad S8.0 with its 4 hours and 49 minutes. We scored below the Lenovo Yoga Tab 3 Pro with its 8 hours and 50 minutes, but that's a bigger slate, and also below the Samsung Galaxy Tab A9.7 with its 13 hours and 9 minutes, also bigger than this model. When it comes to charging, we are promised fast charging, and we kind of get it. We get a reasonable 2 hours and 11 minutes in order to juice up this device. At least it charges faster than the predecessor, the Mi Pad 1, that required 2 hours and a half to charge, and faster than the Asus ZenPad S8.0 that needs 3 hours and 24 minutes to charge, also faster than the ZenPad 7.0 with its 2 hours and 30 minutes. Of course, there are other tablets that charge faster. For example, we got the Evolio Go Fun 3G, it charges in 1 hour and 45 minutes, or the Utok Hello 7Q LTE, which charges in 1 hour and 45 minutes as well. Of course, we got some special settings and options for the battery, which we can find here in the section called Battery and Performance. We start off with battery use, you can see it right here. And if you press this one, you can go to battery saver, select when to turn it on, at what percentage, and uh, you can see here what happens with this feature when it's on. It reduces the device's performance, limits vibration, location services, and most background data. Other than that, we also have battery indicator options. You can manage the app's battery usage from right here. You restrict apps when the battery is low and you can choose which apps will be restricted, usually those that are very power hungry. We also have power settings, can be set to balance or performance if you intend to do some gaming, performance is the way. And you can hide or show system animations in order to save or use up even more juice. Okay, so that's about it. I find the battery to be reasonable when it comes to the working time, when it comes to video, it's a bit underwhelming and the charging is moderate, I would say. It's time to talk about the acoustics. Acoustics here mean dual speakers at the back, at the lower back side. And we have to rely on play music as our music player, which includes the stock equalizer, as far as I know. Here it is. The usual options are here, bunch of genre presets, 5 sliders for various frequencies, bass boost and surround sound. And now let's give it a listen and see what's happening here. Okay, so the experience is quite good, we got a loud tablet here with a clear sound and very powerful bass, that's what I noticed, the percussion is also nice and uh, if you put it on a flat surface there's a bit of muffling, only a bit. So a few decibels of difference between the front and the back, I have to say that the tablet is good enough to cover a conversation in a small room, so that's what the speakers at the back give you. Obviously, we did a test with a decibel meter 
and let's see what came out of that. Here we go. The decibel meter at the back, 82.5 decibels. The decibel meter at the front, 80.8 decibels. This means we're surpassing the ASUS ZenPad S 8.0 with its 79.3 decibels, also the ASUS PhonePad 7 with its 80.6 decibels, and the Audio Viva H7 Extreme with its 74.3 decibels. We scored below the Nokia N1 and its crazy 89.8 decibels, and also below the Samsung Galaxy Tab A9.7 and its 87.6 decibels. Meanwhile, the Xiaomi Mi Pad 1 went up to 84.2 decibels, so this one is a bit inferior when it comes to acoustics, at least as far as the decibel meter is concerned. The settings area includes a bunch of options specifically tailored to the musical experience. So if you go to sound, you can find audio settings, headphone remote button options, assign buttons, a special equalizer only for headphones, Mi sound enhancer and some special settings for a variety of headsets, most of them supplied by Xiaomi. Anyway, I find the speaker to be pretty loud, have a pretty good bass, but it's below some of the competitors like the Nokia N1 for example. Now it's time to talk about the screen. So, 7.9 inch screen, IPS LCD and the already typical resolution of 2048 over 1536 pixels is the same resolution, same diagonal and pretty much the same panel as the one of the Xiaomi Mi Pad, Nokia N1, iPad Mini 2, iPad Mini 3 and iPad Mini 4, so a pretty common panel nowadays. We'll be using the video app to play video. It starts off in landscape mode with the service here that allows you to watch TV shows and all that, but you can go to the offline section or to the my section, local videos, and then check out your very own clips, those that are offline and not from the cloud or from services. Now let's actually view our usual test video, turn on the volume a bit and analyze the image. So we got here options that allow you to select an episode if need be and a bunch of settings for volume, brightness, aspect ratio and you can enhance audio which is always a good thing. Now the actual video experience involves a 4 to 3 aspect, it's not ideal for video consumption, we got a crisp screen with a clear image, pretty good brightness, wide view angles, and uh, the colors are vivid and realistic and the contrast is quite good even in full sunlight, it doesn't seem to be a problem. We proceed with the screen now. And as I said before, the contrast is ok, but it's time to see what the pixels are all about here. So, here we are. This is what the pixels of the screen look like under the microscope. These are RGB stripe pixels and we also measure the brightness with a lux meter, which gave us a value of 353 lux units, which is good, but just good, not more than that. At least we beat the previous model, the Xiaomi Mi Pad 1 with its 310 lux, the ASUS ZenPad 7.0 with its 274 lux, and the ASUS Transformer Book T100 Qi with its 281 lux. We score below the Nokia N1 with its 355 lux, so very close, below the iPad Mini Retina with its 412 lux, and the Galaxy Tab S 8.4 with its 432 lux. The screen could be a bit brighter, but in regular day usage I didn't find the brightness to be lacking very much. Ok, we obviously have special settings for the screen and you can find them in the display department. We got brightness level with automatic brightness included, we got a reading mode that will reduce the screen's glare, the change is immediate as you can see. You can set up its strength, it gets rid of the shade of, shades of blue that will affect your sleep. We have uh, the option to update automatically and uh, select a list of apps that make use of it. and choose those apps that will rely on the reading mode. Colors and saturation can be set from here to warmer or cooler or standard and saturation can be set to brilliant or standard, going with standard this time. Ok, we got a screen saver, double tap to wake, text size and auto rotate screen. And in the text size we have a bunch of options like S, M, L, XL or XXL. Overall it's a good screen, as I said, but it doesn't stand out from the competition. As I said before, there are about 5 panels with the very same uh, performance to offer on the market right now. Now, the cameras, well, 5 megapixel front shooter, 
8 megapixel back shooter with f2.0 aperture and full HD video. And let's see just how fast the camera app is. The answer, well, medium level speed, actually not very fast. And this is the interface, one of the most bare bones interfaces I've seen on any device, phone or tablet. You just have a front camera shortcut, these two options, audio, off and highlight skin tones and the filters. And that's it. Those are all the options you play with. It's true that we have quite a few filters. Then we have the shutter button, video capture button and the gallery shortcut. Well, other than that, zoom goes up to 4x. It's not quite fluid, but the focus, I found it to be reasonably fast. While the picture taking could be a bit faster. Let's try one more shot from this angle. And as you can see, not exactly the fastest tablet in the world, a bit sluggish on this side. This one is also a bit burned and moved. This one's a bit better because I was actually patient for it to focus. We obviously have a gallery of shots, even though it's a tablet and we go easier on tablets when it comes to the camera. Camera photos, here we go. So it was a particularly sunny day of February. And I have to say, I'm a bit surprised by this tablet. It has a few clear and crisp shots with realistic colors. We also tried a selfie, didn't come out very well. As I said before, good focus, realistic colors, crisp images, just looks, look at those thorns. This is a rose from what I know, but it's not blooming because it's February. Anyway, good details here. It takes some very nice close-ups. Selfies aren't impressive. It's slightly above the Nokia N1 and the Xiaomi Mi Pad 1, but it's below the iPad Mini 2, 3 and 4. Good colors, by the way, realistic crisp and clear and aside from two or three missed shots and one burnt one there weren't many blurred shots so that's pretty reasonable now we also have videos taken with the same camera okay so let's see them we got two of them they're shot in mp4 full hd 30 frames per second and 60 mega per second bitrate we start with the first one it's a bit shaky not very clear a bunch of refocus going on, but I was shocked by how good the microphone was. The colors are okay, but the shaky bit and the lack of clarity are a bit of a bummer. And now let's see the other one. Here we go, more color here. I'm looking forward to uploading this on YouTube because we have fantastic acoustic quality so if you want to record stuff with the microphone of your Mi Pad 2, go right ahead, it has a very solid microphone. The video too feels a bit burnt, but it has pretty good clarity and reasonable colors, I would say. Also, not as much refocusing, which is a good thing. Still, in spite of the praise I've just given it, I went back and looked at the videos shot with uh, the iPad Mini Retina, for example, and that one is superior, as is the Nokia N1 when it comes to video capture. However, the photo capture can stand on its own when compared to the previous Xiaomi Mi Pad tablet or the Nokia N1 and perhaps even some of the older iPads. If you plan on doing some editing, well, you're in luck because we have enough options. So we choose a photo then we tap edit and then you'll see these options here we got the usual crop rotate flip adjust fisheye and doodle then sharpen radar highlights contrast saturation hue and vignette then a bunch of filters which pretty much are the stock ones and a bunch of frames also known as the stock ones we're done with the camera we're reasonably happy with it and now it's time to talk about the performance which starts off with the temperature so after playing the game Riptide GP2 for 15 minutes we achieved a temperature of 34.5 degrees Celsius which means there's no overheating here which is always good news now I want to talk about the connectivity and the connectivity means that we got Wi-Fi 802.11 ABG and AC dual band we got Wi-Fi direct Bluetooth 4.1 and USB type C we tested the Wi-Fi connectivity to not so impressive results 18 mega per second in download and 18 in upload usually we get up to 22 or 20 mega per second so could be better there are also bad news here there's no gps there's no nfc and there's no 3g or lte version of the slate also no phone calling here 
One thing that I must mention, it's not related to connectivity, but I must mention it. There's no uh, uh, vibration feedback on this tablet, while the Xiaomi Mi Pad 1 had that. Now we're in that part of the review where we handle the benchmarks, the performance and the browser and we start off with the browser here. It's the MIUI integrated browser. It has an address bar at the top and a search bar, a few um, related links here. And let's go to tabletnews.com. As you can see it's a very sluggish browser and I do mean that. And it has a strange way of rendering the page. As you can see its elements are all over the place. They're not rendered very well they're going on top of each other and that's a bummer but the virtual keyboard is quite comfy and pretty well spaced not very far from the stock option from Google which I guess it's kind of it so I recommend that if you get your hands on a Mi Pad tool you would rather rely on Chrome than its stock browser because it's very slow it gets stuck and displays the page with strange elements we did test the uh, speed of the browser but that was the case of Chrome not this one and guess what the results were quite good if I find them here we go browser mark a pretty good 2087 points in browser mark and this continues with a good score of 749 in some spider and also continues with a very good 4022 in Chrome tested in Velamo the HTML5 test so while the browser results are good keep in mind this is Chrome this is not the stock MIUI browser as far as the UI is concerned, we've got a fluid user interface, there is no lag, however the boot is kind of slow sometimes and there were times when I felt that the device acted strange, for example resetting out of a sudden, after leaving it for a long while, untouched, it simply went off for no reason, happened to me 3 or 4 times, which is strange. In spite of that, as I said before, it has a fluid user interface, has no lag and can run games like this one. It's Order and Chaos 2 from Gameloft, it takes 2GB of space, it's a high-end game, runs perfectly, just like Riptide GP2. So performance is good. And we also did a comparison of benchmarks. We compared the benchmarks of this model with the predecessor, the Xiaomi Mi Pad, that had the Tegra processor, and the Nokia N1, as well as the iPad Mini Retina, just to see how they're handled. I also have to mention that the predecessor, the Xiaomi Mi Pad 1, could not run the benchmark Squadrant, Geekbench 3 or Slingshot. As you can see the game runs fine, all the textures are ok, the water looks nice. The Xiaomi Mi Pad 1 had some trouble with the games because this Tegra processor meant that some games were not supported, which was a bit of a problem. Ok, so since we have the gallery. We also have access to a list of benchmarks right here. The comparison is going on between the iPad Mini Retina, Xiaomi Mi Pad 1, Nokia N1 and Mi Pad 2. And uh, I have to say that uh, the score when comparing this model with its predecessor is about 14 to 4 in favor of the predecessor. So that one is more powerful than this one, at least on paper in benchmarks in real life. The Xiaomi Mi Pad 1 lags and has some stutters, while this one doesn't. It handles the interface much, much better and the games also much better because of its lack of compatibility problems. So no more Tegra, no more problems, that's the thing to remember. Now it's time to talk about the OS, UI and applications. Let's see what we're dealing with here. This is a model that has Android 5.1 with MIUI 7.0 on top. This interface is very minimalistic and very simple, it feels like a sketch of iOS and Emotion UI from Huawei combined and made even more friendly and minimalistic. As you can see this interface doesn't involve any app drawer and you have all the apps on the home screens as well as a couple of home screens dedicated to the widgets. The interface is pretty fluid, it's lag free and the icons are pretty clear except for the ones that are not stock so to say like YouTube or Play Store that have this big area that's empty around the icon itself. Anyway, the colors are pretty light here and frankly speaking I like this interface especially if you have a look at the apps and their design which feels like an Android version of the iOS apps which is kind of nice in this case. Ok, so if you want to do multitasking you press this button here and you will see the apps that are open displayed like this reminding me of the older iOS way of doing multitasking we can close all of the apps like that. 
Okay, and uh, then we have the home screens. As I said, one home screen or better said more home screen are dedicated to the apps themselves. And if you pinch, you can see here that you can move apps, add a few widgets like toggles and all that. Okay, and then use wallpaper, select the effects that you'll use to move between screens. And then we move to the other home screens dedicated to the widgets. And I mean the bigger widgets. So if you pinch, you have a huge selection of such widgets, like those for the music, for the calculator, calendar, clock, gallery, as you can see right here. Um, we also have one for notes. And as I said, they're all good looking and some of them are unique to MIUI. Um, if you pinch the screen here one more time, you can move the apps, you pick up an app and then they start to tremble a bit like on iOS. Now I can put it in a folder or simply move it around. Other than that, we go to the drop down area that's slightly transparent and shows notifications. Then with the swipe to the side, you get to the uh, brightness slider and a bunch of uh, quick settings that include a reading mode which is felt instantly after pressing it, the screen becomes a bit yellowish and a few other extra options related to connectivity and usage. Now let's see the settings area. It's pretty straightforward, it's like a better organized iOS settings area if you want. So connectivity options, Bluetooth and more, notifications, wallpaper, display and sound, lock screen options, do not disturb with exceptions included, a child mode, so if a little one gets hold of the tablet, he'll have his own special settings, extra options for privacy, battery and performance, storage, notification light and buttons, then me account, all, add new accounts, sync, system apps, auto start, and that's pretty much it as far as the options are concerned, as far as the settings are concerned, and now it's time to analyze the applications. You'll be happy to know that there's no bloatware here, the apps are being kept to a minimum, which is very nice. Another plus compared to the previous Mi Pad is the fact we get Play Store pre-installed. We had to do a bit of work around magic on the Xiaomi Mi Pad 1 to get Play Store working on it. There are no gimmicks here, so let's see the pre-installed app list. We got Mi Account and FM Radio, we got Weather, Clock and Calendar with nice designs, there's YouTube and Calculator, Play Music and Notes, which once again reminds me of iOS. Okay, we got Gmail, File Manager, Downloads, Contacts, Play Store, Video, and uh, that's pretty much it. A very short list, which is always welcome, plus some very nice looking widgets, also welcome. Some extra apps in the dock area, and as far as I know, you can add two more aside from these four. We got Gallery, Camera, Settings, and Browser available here. By the way, you can also buy this tablet with Windows 10 if you choose the 64GB version that has that OS. I like the stylish UI and aside from the random resets, the interface was pretty fluid. I enjoyed the widgets and the simplicity of it also. Good OS, UI and applications. And now it's time for the verdict. I'm going to first list the pros and then the cons for this device. On the pro side, it's an affordable slate, as I said before, $186, very good. It's a good looking device that has a premium build, it's made of metal, it's a comfy slate. Also pretty powerful, its CPU is quite good, it can run a 2GB title from the MMORPG genre. The screen is ok and so are the speakers, I'm happy with them, since they can cover conversation in a small room. We got no lag, a great user interface, I have to say that Xiaomi really outdid itself this time. There is no bloatware and it works just fine with no problem, so it's good for gamers and has an ok display speakers and even the camera is pretty much reasonable. On the con side, well, the battery is below the competition, that's for sure, certainly below the iPad. If I remember correctly, this battery is about uh, uh, two times less uh, lasting in the video playback compared to the first iPad mini and that's got to count for something. Benchmarks are low, the browser, the stock browser is horrible, I recommend you use Chrome. We got some resets along the way, or better said, some sudden power offs for no reason. The lack of micro SD and the only 16GB of storage on board are a problem, and also the lack of a 3G or LTE version and GPS may bother some people. However, in the end, this remains a tablet that costs less than $200. It's made of metal, has a powerful processor inside, 
solid speakers, solid camera and a solid display, it can run any game in the Play Store and I say that with good faith. As you can see right here, there is a new GTA game, GTA Liberty City, I'm confident you can run that without a problem. So if you're looking for a tablet that uh, resembles the iPad a bit, it performs just as well, if not better, with Android. It doesn't have all the fuss of a Samsung tablet or some other custom UIs. Well, this is it, the Xiaomi Mi Pad 2. It's a straightforward iPad mini for rival and it shows that Xiaomi, in front of everything else, is promoting its software, which means its interface that's very well done here and it's making less money from its hardware compared to the software and the software is quite good. So this is it from tabletnews.com. This was a review of the Xiaomi Mi Pad 2 we got from Gearbest.com for $186. Bye bye!